is here. There was a sign on the way into the village that said turn left at, at the end of the village. Yeah, in Castle Road. So is this Castle Road coming up? Yeah. So I think Just they've shot past it. There's probably about another two miles down here. You definitely want to come up here in the van. Oh yeah. I'm going to see it on this yet. It's a bit evil. No, oh, it's a bit bent. by John Hayden, licensed to chronolate, fortify the house, was issued in 1561. The outer gate has dates from this period. Began to decline at the start of the 17th century. Hmm. That's quite impressive. Yeah. linked to the dramatic rise and fall of a single family, the Haydens, who lived here for 200 years, made their fortunes through law profession and later wool. So this was their main residence that met 1450, grew increasingly larger and more elaborate as their wealth grew. Uh, splendour was short-lived, accumulated huge debts and they were forced to demolish parts of the castle in 1650 to sell as building materials. Outer Gate House was a late addition to the moated residence beyond and was built to display the family's status. And after the demolition of the main castle, the gate house was converted into a private dwelling. It was occupied until 1920 when one of the towers collapsed. So oh, that was looks very impressive. Yeah. Yeah, the tower on the left hand side. Yeah. Oh, shame. Yeah, there's a mirror here as well. There's a walk you can do. Yeah, there's a 30 minute walk. Mm, probably can do that. I'm asking where the castle walls went. They got sold off to pay their debts. <laughs> Gonna have a look then? You're going in there, obviously. So there's just too, um, too much of a ruin, isn't it? The fireplace. So this was in use till 1920, then. Till 1920, this bit, yeah. Yeah. The tower collapsed. Uh, yeah. Time to get out. <laughs> Would have been very impressive, wouldn't it? Mm. Huge. It would have been, yeah. yeah it would have been. <laughs> and it was huge. And you can't blame uh, Oliver Cromwell for no, this. No. <laughs> yeah, it's got a moat all the way around it. Probably doesn't do signs, you know that. 
It says the, in, the Keep Gatehouse was built by John Hayden in the 1450s as the first building of a grand courtyard residence which covered at least half of the present site. And he rose to prominence as a supporter of the first Duke of Suffolk, William de la Pole. During the turbulent Wars of the Roses, John often switched political allegiances to serve his own means. Hmm. Although he managed to amass great wealth, he made many enemies, and he was described by his contemporaries as crafty and quarrelsome. Gatehouse was an important symbol of his lordship, also large enough to serve as a self-contained, defendable residence in times of danger. So there were two lodges, as in a porter and chief servant, and there was a spacious suite of chambers for the lord and his family. The will of uh, John's son, Sir Henry, describes these rooms as being luxuriously furnished with feather beds and silk curtains. Mm. Not quite so luxurious at the moment. So this is what the Victorians would have described as a romantic ruin, isn't it? Yeah. Good heavens. Well, looks a bit fragile to me as well. Yeah, <laughs> and there's doors as well. A bit drafty in here. Well. Now key in the box. No, if she's found a sniff over there. <laughs> I'll have a look over here. Come pop. After popping. After popping. There's a fireplace. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of little cubby holes and things. Yeah. That's probably the latrine that opens up. Of course, that's got an arrow at the top. Yeah, you shoot at people while you're on the low. <laughs> I'm glad I came with no jumper. Uh -huh. Well, I was sort of expecting a little sort of few stones and things. <laughs> <laughs> Look in here. I suppose they took all the, the proper stones out, didn't they? Mind you, this looks like it was just plastered, doesn't it? Let's look at the board. It's about the wool industry. Bacon thought was established as a vast and profitable wool producing estate. The eastern service range, which was standard, was converted by St John into a wool processing factory. Windows provided light lights for the spinners to produce cloth, much of which was sold to the Netherlands. The coarse material was softened by fulling, a process of compounding, of pounding the cloth by foot in soapy water or stale urine. Lovely probably took place in a tank at the base of the tower to your left. Okay. Textile industry brought considerable prosperity to Norfolk and to the Hayden family and spent the profits on lavish living and extensive building works during the 16th century, which it included the construction of an outer gatehouse and a park in 1561 and later the creation of ornamental gardens and the mere in front of you. 
subsequent lords continued to lead extravagant lifestyles but were poor estate managers and that led to accumulation of debt. They said they had 20 to 30,000 sheep at, at one time. Copy. You seen some more doggies? Not going in then, pups. Obviously, had uh, like a wall around it or jetty of some sort. The rest of them here going around. Swans, look. Oh, that's an old tree. <laughs> Oi. Come on. Another fireplace here, possibly. Just a picture window. Does <laughs> love exploring, doesn't she? Little hole there. It's over here, pops. It's like a well or something, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know what that was, but what base of a tower anyway. So the flint in the walls. Yeah. Oh, what an amazing place. Was obviously the fascia of the. Uh, that was dressed flint, wasn't it? There. Yeah. At the bottom, yeah. Just saying, life in the castle. The inner castle was once divided into two courts. The service court was on the right and the main house was to the left. Yeah, I thought it was the opposite with those windows and everything. No, I suppose that... Yeah, I suppose that's... Yeah, because yeah, it would like have been kitchens all in and here, things like that, yeah. yeah. So to your left was a range of lodging chambers for the Lord's entourage, each with a private latrine housed in the external towers. Oh, that's what those are. Yeah. That's why they've got the openers downstairs. The great public yeah. hall of the castle used for entertaining guests ran from east to west in front of you. Right. So it would have been across the middle there. Yeah. And uh, the service court on the right contains stables, kitchens, a bakehouse and a brew house as well as accommodation for servants. Sir Henry Hayden extended the castle with an additional court in the 15th, early 15th century 
the first of the family to be knighted. He held several positions, <laughs> Poppy, <laughs> several positions of great responsibility that gave the family new stability and allowed Sir Henry's successors to be peaceful and prosperous landlords. And they've got some of the objects they found during excavations and that's a view of what it might have looked like in the mid 16th century. Go and go down there. That's a well there, Pops. Yeah, we don't want you in there. It's oh, we're not going to go very far. It's been blocked up. Oh, you can walk around, obviously because you've got the moat, haven't you? Don't go that way, go the other way. Yeah, some really old trees here. Quite a breeze blowing at the moment. Not very far is the answer. Oh. That's it. That's your lot. Yeah. Come on, just have a look around there. The outer gate house. Go on him. It's down there, Pops. Or the well. Well, it is well, isn't it? Yeah, it Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was Bacon's Thorpe Castle. Castle. Free entry, yeah. Yep. No need to book. No, got a bit of trek up the uh, road. <laughs> yeah. Very different. Yeah.